Hey guys, welcome back to Below Average Bloggers. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate you stopping by. And today I wanted to do a quick video and let you know, in my opinion, paid premium keyword research tools are dead. Um, I don't think you should be using them, especially if you're a new blogger and that's who this kind of channel is devoted to is myself. Those of you in this community who kind of help me out and we help each other. We're new bloggers and we're trying to find our path and make our way in a very competitive and tough industry. And so when I started, I most likely, like you, got really interested and intrigued by the idea that, wow, keyword research is hard. If I pay this company um, some, some cash, they have all the tricks and the algorithms and the secrets and the data, and they will give me these golden keywords that will rank on a new site and I'll be good to go. So let me tell you my lesson learned from this in my almost eight months since I started blogging. And it kind of sucks, so I'll just put it out there for you. It sucks for me, but hopefully if you get something from this, it won't happen to you. So I started a main site, and that main site, I cranked out content. And at, at this point, it's sitting at 106 articles. The majority of those articles were written earlier on with paid keyword research from tools like the big players, right? SEMrush, um, Jesus, I don't even know who all I got them from, but I would sign up for the free trials on the big paid programs and just think, oh, I'll sign up for the free trial and then I'll just grab a bunch of keywords in that seven days and I'll have enough content to write for the next few months. And I did, you know, I did do that. Um, I also paid sellers on freelance platforms who had access to the premium accounts and they would do the keyword research for you and then just spit it out to you and it's much cheaper than you signing up. And I thought, boom, I'm hacking the keyword research algorithm. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to rank. I'm going to kill it. So I did that. I wrote those articles. Um, they were described as low competition, easy to rank for new sites, blah, blah, blah. I wrote those articles. I would hit 1,500, 2,500 words. Um, I did what I think I was supposed to do. That site is doing okay, right? It's seeing eight months old. It's only seeing 3,000 visitors a month. That's nothing special. It's not going to make me any real money. And right now, it just it's whatever. Well, in that time, I started another website. I've started a few, but I started another website, and that website was based only on Google suggestion keyword phrases, long tail phrases, response posts to, to people's queries in Google, things that had zero search volume estimations or 100 search volume estimations, 50 search volume estimations, very low search volume. When you Googled those same questions, you didn't really get a result, and you thought to yourself, well, this might bring in... 20 or, I'll take those 20 or 40 people is what I thought. Well, that website that's written strictly off Google response post suggestions is killing my big website. And it only has 24 articles. Now, granted, it's in an underserved area. It's in a topic that doesn't have many competing websites. So it's just, it's naturally going to take those spots. But here's what I learned about it. Not only am I ranking faster for those, better for those than my big site, um, which has a higher domain authority, like it, my big site's site should be smashing this newer site, but it's getting smashed by the newer site. And I think the reason is Google's getting very good at understanding search intent. They're getting very good at narrowing down the fact that people come to Google because they need a problem solved, a question answered, or they want to research something. And so just shooting out listicles and trying to rank for keywords just based on a paid software that tells you this is the keyword that's going to do it. I haven't had any luck with that. My site that is just answering people's questions about this product and this topic, um, it's killing it. And it's, it's a bummer to me, to be honest, because I put so much work into that bigger site. And look, I'm not dead. That bigger site is not dead. I'm going to keep working on it. And I'm going to keep, I'm now going to implement on the bigger site, this Google auto suggest and Google response post suggestions with zero search volume for the bigger site to hopefully draw in traffic that way and then send people out to the other articles. I don't want new people in, who are starting a blog and they're spending money and they're taking this chance and they're putting it all on the line just to go and pay some big company $100 a month or more for keyword ideas, thinking that this investment in their blog is going to just help them blow up over time. Now, look, you may have better luck than me. You may write better than me. And lots of things may go your way and the paid keyword research tools do great for you. But in my experience... I've gotten very blah results from keyword research tools, paid keyword research tools, and I've gotten outstanding results from Google suggested questions, random questions too, right? So 
sometimes you look up a keyword topic you're, you're searching for and it says, you know, so let's say, for example, you're searching everyone's favorite term in blogging, best ballpoint pen. And then you look down at the Google suggestions or the little box that pops up below that that shows you what people may be searching for, just random questions. And it'll say, like, um, can a blue point pen, you know, can a, can a ballpoint pen fit inside my boot? And you look at that and go, what? What? Makes no sense. Well, guess what? You write that article. There's a reason why Google put that, that question in there, because someone has been searching it or it's been searched enough for Google to say, hey, we need to get this figured out. So some of the some of the articles that I've written that I thought were silly are killing it. And they're getting close to a thousand views a month on one dumb question. So I would say remove all your preconceived notions about what you think people want to know, because from what, what I've seen so far, what I thought was useless info is killing it and driving traffic to my site and getting email subscribers and getting affiliate commissions. And then the ones I thought would kill it that are, you know, good keywords and low comp and popular topics. I'm ranking 30, 40, 50. I'm just not getting anywhere with those articles. So I would suggest not using paid keyword research tools anymore unless you have just gotten some killer results with it. And if you're new and you're just starting out, I want you to go into this understanding that Google is really looking for websites that are helping people solve their problems and answer their questions. And that's not going to come in the form of the best this for that. That's going to come in the form of does my ballpoint pen fit inside of my sock? I don't understand it. I don't understand why it works that way. I have my suspicions. But nonetheless, those types of articles, going into Google and grabbing those really random questions with zero search volume that you wouldn't think anybody cares about, those are killing it on my site. And it's happened more than once. And I'm getting better results than I am with any paid keyword research tools. So if you're new to this and you're looking for ways to rank and you're thinking, man, if I just get a subscription to one of these big players, I'll be able to kill it and I'll be able to rank faster and I won't waste so much time. I would say consider it, but also definitely start throwing in lots of those random Google question posts. And I think you will find that they will serve you better than some of the ones that are supposed to do you really well. That's it, guys. I hope this video was helpful today. I will see you guys in the next video and I appreciate you stopping by.